Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show, Red Pill Edition. My name is Leon Jones, and in tonight's segment, I'm going to get into part two of why I believe that African Americans have an inferiority complex when it comes to other races. Now, what you're going to hear in this video is some review from Saturday's video. And anybody who gives me a thumb down is welcome to give me a thumbs down on a video, but you cannot deconstruct the truth. I don't know if it's your simps out there who are giving me the thumbs down or the women. But if you are, you can't stop this hot plasma because this is raw truth. And a number of you are part of the problem. Now, let me get into this part two on why I believe a number of African Americans have this inferiority complex. First of all, when it comes to our men and the civil rights movement, well, from my standpoint, I believe civil rights was a waste of time. Why? Because civil rights came from a religious platform. You know how Jesus said, turn the other cheek? Well, the problem was black folk turned the other cheek and they were sprayed by water hoses, bitten by dogs, and the South crosses were still being burnt on African Americans' property. You had the church bombing in Birmingham, Alabama, in which six people were killed. You hear about the four little girls, but in that bombing, there's also two little boys. Now, what I can tell you when it comes to African Americans, we tend to follow Caucasian people. In fact, when integration came into the playbook for African Americans, African American people did not understand what integration would do for them. They wanted to be on the same platform with white folk. They wanted to drink out of the same water fountains, eat at the same restaurants. They wanted to have everything that white people had. But here's the problem. African Americans did not know that when they integrated with white people, their economy went away. Remember, before integration, there was Rosewood, there was Tulsa, Oklahoma, known as Black Wall Street, and there were other areas where African Americans flourished. In fact, African Americans had the highest marital rate. African Americans could not get welfare. In fact, all of your welfare programs came after the Great Depression, and most of the people who got on the welfare problems were white folk. Now, the thing I can tell you about African Americans is we tend to believe that trying to be Caucasian is good and being African American is bad. In fact, let me clue you in on something. Black folk had their own universities known as HBCUs. Well, many of them wanted to go to the white colleges because they were, in black people's mind, more prestigious than HBCUs. And you have some good HBCUs like Morgan State University, Howard University, Lincoln University, Cheney University, Wilberforce University, Virginia Union University, Virginia State, Bethune-Cookman, Grambling State. The list goes on and on and on and on. Fam you down in Tallahassee. But we think what we had was much less than white folk. In fact, when it comes to black businesses, we don't even support black businesses now. But we will go ahead and support Asian businesses. We will go ahead and support 
Middle Eastern businesses, and we will go ahead and support white businesses. But when we have businesses of our own, we don't trust each other. But we trust other races, and we want to be like these other races, but other races do not care about us. And when it comes to family structure, we do not have any family structure. In fact, our own women want to be equal to us. And here's how they want to be equal to us. They want to compete with us because society and the government has given African-American women a greater opportunity to go to college than black men. But the funny thing about it, African-American women still have a net worth of five bucks. In fact, when it comes to African-Americans, many of us, whether male or female, we tend not to invest. Ask yourself, how many African-Americans own some type of stock? Yes, we'll go to work for somebody, and then we will end up dropping off when it comes time to retire. But at the end of the day, when it comes to us as African-Americans, we don't have our own economy. In fact, if you look at a number of the black neighborhoods, they are dominated by the Democratic Party. And a number of your African-Americans are mayors and they're also city council members and they are Democrats. They are liberal Democrats. You look at cities like Chicago, Detroit, Baltimore. Los Angeles, Houston, Gary, Indiana, and I live here in Portage, Indiana, and if you go into any type of African-American neighborhood, it is blighted, boarded up homes, a lot of drugs. Now, I'm not saying drugs aren't in every other place, but if you look at a number of the African-American neighborhoods, you have a lot of crime, and the biggest thing you have is lack of family structure. And when you put a number of women in charge of running a household, it doesn't work out. Now, I'm not saying all women are bad at leadership, but most of them are because they don't have any concept of order because they're not responsible. And our women, we tend, our women tend to follow trends set by Caucasian women. Now, here's the trend that they follow, feminism. And if you look at feminism, a number of African-American women believe that they don't need a man. And you have individuals like Lonnie Love, you had Eve, you had Janet Jackson, you had Serena Williams. They married outside the black race, but yet they still think black men are bad. Well, first of all, these women don't know all black men. They only know the black men that they had bad experiences with. But when it comes to the African-American woman dating outside the race, every other race of man does not have to live up to the standards that we have to live up to when we date African-American women or women. You look at the man that Lonnie Love has. He has no job no car, and children. As an African-American man, I would be told I'm not shit if I didn't have any of that. And when it comes to African-American men, because this is fair and balanced, many African-American men have been raised by their mothers. They believe that their mothers can do no wrong. In fact, their mothers taught them how to be effeminate. And when it comes to the African-American male, they're very dysfunctional. In fact, if you look at African-Americans as a whole, they believe in the LGBTQ community. They believe in integration, I mean immigration. And at the end of the day, that basically leaves African-Americans out of the market. Now, when it comes to Trends. You look at the hairstyles that so many African American women have. And when I'm talking about hairstyles, look at how they paint their hair with these funny colors. 
Do you know who started that? White women did. And when white women had the colors of pink and green and yellow and, and red and blue, back in the 60s, they were known as flower children. But you see a number of African-American women doing the same thing with their hair that white women have done. You see a lot of weave. You see a number of African-American women who are bald-headed because they don't want to do their hair. A number of African-American women are not feminine. I didn't say all, but a number of them are. They're masculine. They have a lot of tattoos. Where if you look at a lot of the African-American guys, they're very effeminate. And a number of African-American men, believe it or not, they actually bat from both sides of the plate, including some of these pastors. And what I believe has ruined the African-American community is too much religion. We believe in all this magic that's not true. Listen, God is not going to help you if you don't help yourself. And when it came to Martin Luther King, and tomorrow is Martin Luther King's not official birthday, but it is the holiday. Well, Martin Luther King was handpicked by white folk. Malcolm X is considered beneath Martin Luther King because, see, Malcolm X would fight back. Martin Luther King was too passive. And Martin Luther King's style has made docile and simp black men. This is why a number of black men don't have any killer instinct. And if you look at black men today, look at how they carry themselves. When I was coming up, most black men did not wear earrings in their ear. They weren't effeminate because black men had fathers. And fathers taught black men how to be men. Today's black men are crybabies. I watch a number of African-American sports. You look at football. African-American men on a football field have temper tantrums. They're very emotional. You look at the NBA. The African-American men they cry. They cry like women. And you can tell that all of these African-American men had no fathers in their lives. Now, going back to the black man ain't shit comment that a number of African-American women used to make, all started with Oprah, Michelle Williams, Deborah Cooper, and some of these other feminist black women who think because they have a little education, they are better than the black man, which let me tell you, African-American women, something. Most of you who have degrees, you major in something easy. You weren't like me. You didn't major in STEM because many of you cannot even do math. You can't add because if you were that smart, you could have a cogent conversation. But I know many African-American women do not understand politics. They do not understand money. They don't understand relationships. And they're very gullible because they have a demonic or a herd mentality. In fact, the women who are leading you are the ones you want to be like. And that is the, ca the Caucasian woman. In fact, it's that Caucasian woman named Margaret Sanger who put Planned Parenthood in every African-American community because she wanted to destroy African-Americans. Margaret Sanger did not like African-American people. And when it comes to us today, you have a number of African-American people who believe that if we deal with white folk, we're going to get an upper hand. But many white folk don't want to deal with us. They know we're dysfunctional. They know we need help. But many of us fail to take accountability for our actions. And when it comes to African-American men and African-American women, the reason why they envy other races is because they hate themselves. They were told by the race to whom thinks they're superior everyone that we are bad. We don't know anything. In fact, that race controlled us. We didn't fight. I'll tell you one thing. The Indians fought to the death. 
because the Indians were also slaves, but they weren't afraid to fight that white man. In fact, if you look at everything in the continent of Africa, black people pretty much had it easy there because all the resources were there. And when you have an abundance of everything, you tend to be more docile because you don't have to fight. All you have to do is get the resources and you can do what you want with the resources because you didn't have to worry about anyone coming to conquer you to get your resources. But too many African-American men got complacent. And what did some of these other countries do? They came they took with the African-American people, the Egyptians, the Moors, and then all of the kings who sold African-American people into slavery. Well, they learned the secrets from African-American people. And what happened? Those other groups took our knowledge and they used it against us. And when they did that, what happened? We were conquered. And from there on, we had been in bad shape. But a lot of the problems that we have, we can solve ourselves. We just don't want to. In fact, too many of us are looking for someone to tell us what to do. The days of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X are over. Then you got all these shines out here who are pro-blacks trying to tell us that if we don't think like them, we're coons, or you hear white supremacy. But a number of these pro-blacks out here, like Tariq Nasheed, Brother Polite, you have Van Jones, you even have uh, the gentleman, he has a show, I forgot his name, but it'll come back to me, Philip Advise. Formerly the Advice Show. He has a channel called the African Diaspora Channel. Well, you look at all these guys, and Louis Farrakhan's son, to name a few, all these individuals talk all that pro black stuff, but they're not married to someone who is black. So, what they're doing, they're hustling black people like pastors. And see, the biggest hustler in the African-American community is that black pastor. But again, if you talk about that black pastor, then you are talking about African-American women. Well, you have to call African-American women out because the African-American women were the ones who were responsible for raising these boys. And now they know that these boys came out dysfunctional. The African-American woman wants to run to the other side to try to get some shine from white folks when at the end of the day they don't realize that the same men that they say ain't shit they raised them but they fail to take responsibility the only time an African American woman takes responsibility for her actions is when the situation is positive let me give an example if she has children who make the honor roll who, who make the football team or the basketball team or the cheerleading team she says I did it by myself but the minute the son or daughter ends up in jail oh it's the father's fault well many of them didn't want the father in the picture because they wanted welfare now this trend or cycle has gone on for the last past 50 or 60 years but too many of us African American people believe in putting other races on a pedestal. And when we do that, that makes us look like we ain't shit. And at the end of the day, we look inferior. But in the long run, it's African-American men who created the elevator, the traffic light, the blood bank, refrigerated trucks, Many African-American people forget that. But the problem is we allowed the patent to go to white folk. And let me tell you this, white folk aren't that smart. But they were smart enough to take our secrets and patent our secrets 
to become millionaires. And when it comes to leadership, like Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King didn't say anything about black businesses. He didn't say anything about economy. In fact, Martin Luther King, just like Obama, they dated white women. And they really wanted to be with white women. Because from my standpoint, I believe integration was the wrong thing. Now, equality, when it comes to the law, that's one thing. But what integration did was take the economy away from black people and integrate it with white people because white people did not want African-American having their own economy. Why? Because when we control our economy, guess what? We have power. So what happened when integration came into play, white folk took our power away from us. And what happened? Affirmative action came into play. But guess what? African Americans never benefited from affirmative action. The people who benefit from affirmative action today are white women, the LGBTQ community, and other minorities like Middle Easterns, Asians, although Asians don't need it because Asians are killing it with their economy, and you have, again, other immigrants from the places like Central America. But again, when it comes to African American people, we have to stop putting other races above us because it does enshrine us into psychological slavery. We can get on YouTube platforms and talk about white supremacy all day, but it was the African American people who started white supremacy. If we didn't give white folk our secrets, we would not be where we are today. And if you look at what Caucasian people did, they didn't invent anything. They took what was already there and conquered it. Why? Because the people who were in the continent of Africa basically gave up their secrets. And white folks conquered them to take the resources. And this is what white folks have always done. Now, I'm not knocking white folks. I don't dislike white folks. But I tell you this, white folks are people just like African-American folks are. But we as African-Americans, we're stuck on colorism, self-hate. We have a lot of distrust for each other. You have African-American women who would rather have a mixed child rather than a black child. We have African-American men who believe that white women are better than black women. Because let me tell you something. You have a number of African-American women who have attitudes, but who leads the country, the West, in attitude? It's white women. White women are not proud to be white themselves. In fact, they whine, they moan, and they cry. They know how to play the victim better than the black woman does. They know how to be more docile. See, the black woman, she wants to be masculine. And the problem in the African-American community, there is no order. You cannot have women run the community because women do not build. Now, you have some of them who can go out and handle business, but the majority of them don't. And I'm not going to use the exception to the rule because the exception to the rule is very small. It's just like when it comes to college. Yes, you have some black women in STEM, but very little. I don't even believe it's 1%. You don't even have enough black men in STEM. But when it comes to black people, too many of us believe in magic, religion, intrinsicness, nuts and berries. And at the end of the day, that does not help us get economically free or financially free because we are depending on another race to bail us out. Look, you have a number of white folk who don't like each other. And white folk are very good at playing classism. If you are a bottom-of-the-barrel white person, you're not going to be out here 
with the elite white folk, no, you're going to be right back here. And those white folk who are at the top, they're going to use the bottom of the barrel white folk as their worker bees. And I believe black folk should do the same thing. All you high-powered, educated black folk, particularly black men, if you want to run the communities again, you're going to have to go in and buy some of this old infrastructure in the hood and get the hood people to do the work for you. Let me give you an example. Let's look at a drug dealer. Where is the kingpin sitting? The kingpin's probably sitting down in South America somewhere because he has enough people out there that are going to take the bullets for him. And most of the little guys are always fighting for the crumbs. That's how the drug world works. Well, we as African-American people, what we got to stop doing is including the bottom of the barrel, black folk, into elite black folks' lives. Why? Because we keep caping for the bottom of the barrel. Look, the bottom of the barrel is just dragging us down. We take the bottom of the barrel and we use those people as worker bees and we make money off of them. And if they don't want to do the work for us, we can gladly fire them. But it's the top of the line African-American men and some of the women that have all of the education and resources. But we get them from white folk. We need to create our own. And again, when we get degrees, because I have degrees myself, we think because we work for the white man, because that's what the white man wanted us to do anyway when we integrated. He didn't want us to have our own. And the reason why he didn't want, to, want us to have our own, it's because that white man could control us. And that's what's happening. But at the end of the day, we are still looked at as black people. We can move into a white neighborhood every day. But a number of white folk, they don't want us there because they know many of us come from dysfunction. But because they don't know all black people, they look at all black people as dysfunction. So no matter if you have a lot of money, you have good credentials. I'm going to be looked at as a Pookie and Ray Ray. That's how a number of white folks look at us. Now, I'm sharing all this with you because too many of us, African Americans, think because we work for white folk that we're white. No, we're not white. We're African American. We're going to always be black. But too many of us think because we work for white folk, we've made it. No, we didn't make it. We are still slaves because we don't control anything. And at the end of the day, when you don't control anything, you don't have power. Men are supposed to be leaders. But too many African-American women have raised these men not to be leaders. They want their daughters to be leaders. This is why you have the role reversal in the African-American community. And at the end of the day, we are never going to make it. We're always going to be at the bottom because they, there is no true family structure within the American, with the African-American community. And again, we as black people, we're always going to fail because we have a defeatist attitude. And at the end of the day, we're going to maintain the position of psychological slaves if we keep putting other races above us. Because those other races aren't better than us. We have it in our mind that they're better than us. Because what they're doing, they're taking money from us and they're keeping it in their own community. And at the end of the day, we don't have an economy because we depend on white people for our sovereignty. And when we depend on other races for our sovereignty, guess what? That makes us look like we are inferior people.
So African American people, stop the self-hate when it comes to each other because other races are not better than we are. When we have problems, we solve our own problems because nobody is going to solve the problems except for us. But we must be willing to be proactive when it comes to problem solving. And at the end of the day, if we don't solve our problems, we will remain in a situation that makes us look inferior. And that's my commentary for this edition of the 401 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube. If you like what I just presented, please comment, share, and subscribe. Also, comment, share, and subscribe to my second channel. That's the Mind of STEM channel. And on that channel, I give you a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. And also, check out my Blog Talk radio show. I do that show every weekend. On that channel, I'm giving you all of the red pill content. And if you don't know where any of my channels are, you can look me up on Twitter and Facebook because when I finish recording all my videos in my blog talk radio show, I put everything on my other platforms. And I also have a call in number to my radio show, 215-383-5785. Now I don't utilize that call in number because what I've been doing is commentary format. It gives a show much better quantity or quality. And that's it for this video. Remember, be blessed for what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. But always know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Thank you for listen, listening to this video. Remember, take care of each other. And remember, African American people, you are not inferior. What you have to learn how to do is be positive about yourself. And being positive is not always utilizing religion because that black pastor isn't doing anything either. And we have to call that black pastor out. Remember, always have your stock in you. Again, thank you for listening to this video. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. Please have a wonderful and blessed night. God bless you. I'm out.